Welcome to the Online Dental Hygiene and Dental Assisting Information Session. This session is a requirement for initial admissions to Wake Tech as a pre-dental student. Please have the clinical admissions packet accessible or paper available to take notes. The packet is available by clicking Course Documents on the left-hand side of the Blackboard portal. You will be required to take a quiz of understanding at the conclusion of this presentation for verification purposes. Feel free to take a moment to pause the session at this time to get paper or the packet available to take notes. The dental programs are competitive admissions programs. For this reason, the information session provides specific admissions information, including a basic overview of both assisting and hygiene, clarity on the competitive selection and admissions process, and general information. Students seeking enrollment in health science programs at Wake Tech will actually submit two separate applications. The first is an application for general admissions to the institution. This enables the college to create a student academic record. The second application is the clinical application. The clinical application must be submitted to be considered for admission into the clinical programs. Acceptance to Wake Tech is not guaranteed acceptance into the clinical programs. The steps to be admitted to Wake Tech Community College are first to apply to the college. On the main page of the school website, which is www.waketech.edu, you will find links to the application. Students who have previously attended Wake Tech Community College may also need to apply if the last term you attended was longer than a year ago. Applicants will then need to submit official transcripts from both high school and college. Then you will be required to complete this information session. If need be, the next step would be to schedule the college placement test. The next screen will help you to determine if you are exempt from testing. After the first four steps are complete, it is now time to meet with an advisor at the Perry Health Science campus to create an academic plan. Students new to the college will need to complete new student orientation, and students seeking enrollment in online classes will need to complete ELI, an orientation to online learning. This slide illustrates the various ways applicants can exempt from placement testing. Starting with the first box, students who have graduated from a U.S. high school in the last 10 years are exempt from placement testing. Students who have taken SAT or ACT within the last 10 years can see an advisor for the cutoff scores and determine exactly where you place. Students who have taken the GED test and scored 170 on all parts of the test are exempt from placement testing. Students who have completed transition coursework within the last 10 years at a North Carolina community college are also exempt from placement testing. Applicants who have a prior degree from a U.S. college or university are exempt from placement testing. Students who have taken the high set test and scored 15 on all subjects and a four on the essay are exempt from placement testing. Also accepted, are standardized placement testing scores taken within the last 10 years at colleges. If you do not meet any of the testing exemptions, then you will be required to take the placement test. Our placement test is called the RISE placement test. An application must be on file prior to testing, and you may find information on preparing and registering for the test through Wake Tech Community College's testing website. It is testingcenter.waketech.edu. The test is not pass-fail, it's just determining at what level you should begin your courses. If you decide, after the first attempt, to take the test again, you must wait seven days, and it is a $10 retest fee. 
all applicants must provide Wake Tech official high school and college transcripts. Official simply means that they come from the actual school in a sealed envelope or via an institution's electronic document service. Provided to you on the screen is Wake Tech's mailing address and you can address it to student services. If the transcript is sent to you or you have copies and they're official, please do not open them before you submit them to an advisor. Transcripts will be unofficially evaluated by a health sciences advisor during an advising session. College transcripts are usually officially reviewed after a student has been accepted to the college. Official transcripts from accredited institutions will be reviewed against established standard equivalencies and transfer equivalencies will be recommended by the appropriate dean or a designee. If you have questions or concerns about transfer credits, please email TranEvalREC, that's T-R-A-N-E-V-A-L-R-E-Q, at wiktech.edu. Please allow six to eight weeks for the transcript evaluation process to take place. Transfer credits from other colleges, please take note. All North Carolina community colleges use the same Common Course Library. Students attending other colleges and universities outside of our area or within North Carolina, please be mindful that if you take biology courses, they must have labs. Also be mindful is that often courses may have the same title, but the content may be different. So you may be required to submit additional information during the evaluation process. If you are planning to complete your general requirements at another institution, submit updated transcripts and always keep a running conversation with a Wake Tech Perry Health Sciences advisor. After you've completed the following steps, the residency application, the Wake Tech application, this information session, we've received your transcripts, and you've completed testing if necessary, then you are admitted to Wake Tech as a pre-dental hygiene or pre-dental assisting student. This video will offer basic information on the dental assisting and hygiene professions. We will then begin discussing information specific to Wake Tech Community Colleges programs. Here you can learn about the differences between dental assistants and dental hygienists, as well as career information like education requirements, salary, and job outlook for each to help you decide which of these careers might be right for you. The differences between dental assistant and dental hygienist positions center on the tasks they're expected to perform and their level of interaction with patients. Perhaps the biggest difference between these dental support positions is that a dental assistant provides direct aid to dentists, conducting office tasks and small supervised jobs on patients' teeth, while a hygienist often works one-on-one -on -one with a patient and doesn't have as much constant supervision. Dental hygienists must also hold at least an associate's degree and a state license in the field, while dental assistants may or may not need formal education depending on the state in which they work. Dental assistants perform both preparatory and breakdown duties in the office, Depending on the state of employment, dental assistants may be allowed to do some additional advanced duties, including applying topical anesthetic, sealant applications, coronal polishing, and fluoride applications. Some of their typical duties include the following. Disinfecting and laying out dental instruments. Obtaining patients' dental records. Handing instruments to dentists during procedures. Instructing patients on oral care. Preparing x-ray machines, impression materials anesthetics, and cement, billing patients and handling payments, and ordering dental supplies. Some states require that dental assistants be licensed, but these requirements vary. Some states have regulations that require aspiring dental assistants to complete one-year certificate or diploma programs. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS, the median annual salary for dental assistants was $36,940 as of May 2015. The BLS projected an 18% rise in employment opportunities between 2014 and 2024. A dental hygienist performs more advanced tasks that involve direct patient care. State laws determines what tasks hygienists may perform, but typical duties may include polishing patients' teeth, 
removing hard and soft deposits from teeth, using several tools to remove tartar, plaque, and stains, and developing x-ray film. Education requirements for these professionals include earning an associate's degree in dental hygiene, and most programs take about three years to complete. License requirements differ from one state to the next, but typically individuals must pass an accredited training program as well as clinical and written examinations. The BLS projected a 19% growth rate in the dental hygiene field between 2014 and 2024, which is considerably faster compared to other career fields. The median annual wage for dental hygienists was $72,910 as of May 2015, according to the BLS. Dental assistants tend to perform more administrative duties to assist dentists, while dental hygienists work directly with patients to help clean their teeth prior to dental exams. Both careers are expected to have positive job growth. Dental assisting is a three-semester, one-year, full-time day program. The one year does not include prerequisite requirements. 32 students are admitted each year. The clinical application is due on May 15th. Students will graduate as DA2s and are eligible to sit for their CDA certification. As part of the program, students will graduate with over 300 hours of hands-on clinical experience. Those experiences include two days a week at UNC Chapel Hill School of Dentistry and summer office experiences. Dental hygiene is a five-semester, two-year full-time day program. The two years does not include the eight prerequisite courses needed to be a competitive applicant. 24 students are admitted each year. The clinical application deadline is January 31st. Graduates of this program are eligible to sit for the state and national licensure exams to become a registered dental hygienist. Patient requirements differ by semester in each year. But on average, to meet minimum requirements, they need one to two geriatric patients, five to nine adult patients, one to two children patients, and one to two adolescent patients each semester. This is an illustration of the program planning guide for both dental assisting and dental hygiene. The program planning guides are published to illustrate the total number of credits needed to earn the dental assisting diploma and the dental hygiene degree. The non-dental courses listed are for pre-dental students to take to be considered competitive applicants. The intent of the non-dent courses being completed prior to starting the program is that during the one year of clinicals or the two year of clinicals, your focus would solely be on those courses. Acceptance for both programs is based upon a point system. Students with the most competitive points are accepted into the DEN courses. The way that points are given is as follows. For grades of A, that is equal to 4.0, B's 3.0, C's 2.0. The point value of the grade is multiplied by the credit hours of the class, and this equals the point total for the courses. Technical courses, which are the science courses, are doubled. So examples of the points that are awarded are provided to you on the slide. So as the example shows, for courses like English, Psychology, and Communications, the highest points you can receive for an A is 12 points. For a B is 9, and for a C is 6 points. For the Sciences, the highest for A for a 3 credit science course is 24 points, and the highest points for a 5 credit science is 40. Once accepted, pre-dental assisting students are advised based upon a life to school balance framework. If a student is required to take college transition courses, then those courses are recommended first. 
Then students are advised to take the following prerequisites. English 111, COM 120, Psychology 118, and Bio 106. For students pursuing dental hygiene, if required, transition courses should be the first priority. Then students can begin taking general education courses toward their prerequisite requirements. Those courses are English 111, COM 120, Psychology 150, Sociology 210, Humanities Fine Art Elective, Chemistry, Anatomy and Physiology, and Microbiology. The course titles for the prerequisites listed on the prior slides is available on this slide. You can also find this information on the left-hand side of the Blackboard portal under Course Documents. The four prerequisites for dental assisting and the eight prerequisites for dental hygiene can be taken in various formats. You can take them online as hybrid courses, traditional seated courses, day, night, full-time, or part-time. Displayed are the points applicants can earn for specific grades in the prerequisite courses. Please note that all science courses must be taken within five years of the clinical application deadline, and successful completion of all prerequisites does not guarantee admission into the clinical programs. Students transferring from other colleges or planning to take the prerequisites at another university or college will find course titles are similar, but content may be different. We will award credit for course equivalents. Listed here are substitutions we allow for students taking the prerequisites at other community colleges and even here at Wake Tech. Visit the transfer resource page on the Wake Tech website for more information about course equivalencies. There are extra point opportunities for students pursuing dental assisting. Students who take Bio 163, Anatomy and Physiology, and Bio 175, Microbiology, in place of Bio 106, you will receive an extra 10 points in addition to the points for the grade. Students are permitted to take DEN 100 Oral Facial Anatomy and or DEN 111 Infection Hazard Control prior to the application deadline. If you take these courses and earn a grade of A, B, or C, you can receive points for your grades. For students interested in taking these courses, my email address is provided, tgriffin4 at waketech.edu. We award waiting points for students who applied previous years, 5 points for one time of reapplying and 10 points for two years of reapplying. We also award for dental assisting national board certifications. We award 10 points for the radiation health and safety certificate, and we will award five points for the infection control certificate. Chemistry proficiency is required for the dental hygiene program. Chemistry is required to enroll in anatomy and physiology. If a student has had a chemistry course in high school and passed it with a C or better, then they have the option to take anatomy as their first science course. Students not having high school chemistry will need to begin with their chemistry requirement first. Either way, a college chemistry course is required, but having it in high school allows more flexibility in the scheduling of science courses. All applicants are required to observe a licensed dental hygienist in order to help the applicant make a more informed career decision. A total of 40 hours of observation are required and should occur within one year of the date of application for the year in which you wish to enroll in the dental hygiene program. 
Documentation of these visits must be submitted by the admissions deadline. This form is available to you in the clinical application packet via the Blackboard portal. For the fall 2021 cycle of applicants and beyond, the shadowing hours have been reduced to 20 hours. Effective immediately are changes to extra points for dental hygiene applicants. Effective immediately, there will no longer be extra points awarded for applicants who are CODA accredited dental assisting graduates or who hold CDAs. We will no longer award points for applicants who submit hours for dental assisting and healthcare work experience, and we will no longer award points for additional shadowing. Please make note that Wake Tech Community College is continuously evaluating admissions procedures and reserves the right to make changes as necessary. The application period for dental hygiene is now April 1st through January 31st. Applicants with equal point totals will be selected by choosing the applicant who has submitted a completed dental hygiene clinical application earliest and who has the highest points. If a tie continues, the date the student was accepted as a pre-dental hygiene student to the college will be utilized to break that tie. Applicants who have been dismissed from or discontinued another dental hygiene program will need to submit a personal letter of explanation and a letter of explanation from the program director. Up to 20 points may be deducted from the total quality points, and these applicants will be considered as new students only. Dental hygiene prior points. This slide illustrates prior points for the past nine years. Take a note of the point ranges and try yourself to target within those point ranges to be a competitive applicant. The summary for the applicant class of 2018 is as follows. 13 applicants had straight A's. Of those admitted, one had a CDA, nine had dental assisting work experience, and seven had healthcare work experience. For the applicant class of 2019, three graduated as DAs, three had CDAs, 10 worked as dental assistants, and five had healthcare work experience, and 14 applicants had straight A's. This slide illustrates prior points for the past nine years for dental assisting. The summary for the applicant class of 2018 is 12 had by a 163 and 175, which equates to 10 extra points toward their application, 16 had taken the DEN courses prior to applying, 4 received reapplication points, and 4 took the IOR certificate through the Dental Assisting National Boards. For the applicant class of 2019, 4 applicants had straight A's, 26 had taken Bio 163 and 175, 15 had taken the DEN courses, 11 received reapply points, and one took the RHS certificate. Please also note the point ranges, and as you're taking your prerequisite courses, try to aim within the point ranges that are given. Please remember the following. Only those students who turn in the dental application will be considered for the dental classes. The only exception is for pre-dental assisting students taking DEN 100 or DEN 111 for extra points. Applications must be submitted on a yearly basis. If you are not admitted to the program, then you will have to reapply the next year. Points are calculated at the time the clinical applications are due, as of January 31st for dental hygiene and as of May 15th for dental assisting. Courses completed after these dates will not be included in the total points calculation. Students with the same points are then ranked by the date that they were initially admitted to the college as a pre-dental student. Hygiene program outcomes. The boards aren't until June each year followed by licensure by late June, so most of our graduates are finding work by July each year. Our assisting students, about 50% of those students are employed by general practice, pediatric, orthodontics, and oral surgery offices before even finishing their program requirements. All are typically employed by October 1st. And for our students who are on an F-1 visa, it is suggested you can verify and receive your credential and work through the North Carolina Board of Dental Examiners. The application for dental assisting is due by May 15th. It can be faxed, 
emailed, or delivered to the Perry Health Sciences campus. Applicants are typically notified by the end of May and the orientation is held in June. The application for dental hygiene is due by January 31st. It can be faxed, emailed, or delivered to the Perry Health Sciences campus. Applicants are typically notified in March and the orientation is held in April. When you submit your clinical application, be sure that the application is completely filled out and supporting documentation is provided. Criminal background checks are required of all students entering health science programs. If you have questions regarding criminal background checks, please contact Barbara Smith at 919-747-0105 or basmith1 at wagetech.edu with your questions. The North Carolina Board of Dental Examiners may request information regarding conviction of a felony and or misdemeanor and or current charges on the application for licensure and may decide not to license an individual based upon the results of an investigation. Here are a few notes from the department heads. These professions are health service professions. Expected from students is professionalism, patient engagement, sensitivity, and keen listening skills. You can also expect certain levels of physical and mental stress pertaining to the nature of the work, interactions with patients, and interactions with colleagues. You can also expect to see blood and be exposed to bloodborne pathogens by way of oral surgery and gum bleeds. It is difficult to work while attending the program. Students who work usually have flexible job schedules or work only during the weekends. If you are accepted or an alternate to the clinical program, attendance at the orientation is mandatory. There are no exceptions. Typically, the dental hygiene orientation is in April and the dental assisting orientation is usually in June. Hygiene students need patients for x-rays and cleanings. It is the student's responsibility to ensure that enough patients are scheduled to meet minimum requirements for clinic. Quotas are assigned for each semester and are included in the syllabus for each clinical course. The dental clinic maintains a list of prospective patients to assist the students in finding acceptable patients. Please be mindful of the following. Be prepared for cancellations. Try to schedule reliable, responsible patients and utilize your own social networks. The following is a copy of the Dental Hygiene Clinic flyer. Included in the information is basic information in regards to the screening time and the length of time for cleanings per visit. I suggest for all students pursuing dental hygiene is to actually become a patient. There you'll find listed the phone number, and the email address to schedule an appointment for yourself. Thank you for your time and attention. We hope that this time was well spent and that you've learned lots of information about the dental assisting and dental hygiene admissions process. We now invite you to visit the Perry Health Sciences Campus, Building A, Room 102, to meet with an admissions advisor to discuss your admission status and courses that you need to take to complete your prerequisites. Please, at the conclusion of this session, complete the quiz of understanding so that you're able to receive credit for completing this information session. For students who have especially already applied to Wake Tech, submitted transcripts, completed placement testing, or your current student one year program change, please come to the Perry Health Sciences campus so that we can move forward with your admissions process. We are open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. with no appointment necessary. Do have a great afternoon or have a great day.